In this video, I want to discuss how to solve the uh, three-dimensional molecular geometry when there is no central atom using Vesper theory. So all of the situations that we've looked at at this point have been molecules that have a clear central atom, right? CH4, PCL5, what have you, right? There's always been one atom that we can denote as the central atom and use Vesper theory to uh, discern its three-dimensional structure. Now, what happens when you have a molecule that does not have a clear single central atom, right? Like the case here of acetic acid, right? I've given you the uh, Lewis structure for acetic acid. So this is the full complete Lewis structure for acetic acid. And um, basically what we have here is a situation where we can't really say that one atom is the central atom, right? Maybe you could say that this carbon is, but there really isn't a, a single central atom here. So what do we do? Do we just throw Vesper theory out of the window? Of course not. The same rules of energy minimization are at play. These atoms are still going to try to arrange themselves such that they reduce that electron repulsion. The only thing we have to do is just chunk this problem up into a couple different uh, atomic centers that we focus on and then put it all back together. So the first thing you want to do here is identify your central atomic center. So there is no single central atom, but we will have various central atomic centers. And by central atomic centers, I mean anything that has at least two bonds or more, right? Two bonds, two, two real atom attachments or more, right? Right. So anything that has two bonds or more is going to be uh, identified as a central atomic center. And then we'll take each of those and look at the local geometry around that central atomic center. So as far as acetic acid goes, I spot three central atomic centers. This one, this carbon, this carbon and this oxygen. Right. Everything else is really only involved in one real atom attachment. So these three are our focal central atomic centers. And in order to make this more clear, I'm going to label these different carbons. So this will be CA and we'll call this one CB. OK, so um, so now we want to take each of these and chunk them up. Right. So we want to look first at what's just attached to carbon A. Right. So first, we're just going to look at everything that's attached to carbon A. So we've got these three central atomic centers. Let's focus on the first one. Right. So the attachments to CA. We're going to just take that piece and treat it like its own Lewis, its own separate Lewis structure. So CA is attached to CB and it's attached to three hydrogens. Right. So for this single atomic center, we want to calculate a steric number. So for carbon A, it is attached to four atoms. So we got four plus zero lone pairs equals a total steric number of four. So if we consult our chart here, right, steric number four with no lone pairs gives us a tetrahedral geometry. So if we go back here, this guy is going to be tetrahedral. Right. So tetrahedral for carbon A. And so let me use a different color. Moving on to carbon B. Right. We're going to investigate just the region around carbon B. Everything that's directly attached to carbon B. So carbon B is attached to carbon A on the left, an oxygen atom on the right and is double bonded to an oxygen atom at the top. Right. So double bonded to an oxygen here. Right. So um, it has three real atom attachments. So if we do the steric number, we got three real atom attachments plus zero lone pairs. It's going to give us a steric number of three. So again, investigating Vesper theory chart, right? We got three atom, real atom attachments with zero lone pairs. So that's going to give us a trigonal planar geometry around this guy. So trigonal planar right and let me box these right so for carbon a we got trigonal planar 
car or carbon a we got tetrahedral carbon b we got trigonal planar and so now we just have to deal with that oxygen atom at the at the far side here this third central atomic center so for this guy it's just attached to the hydrogen and carbon b but we also got these lone pairs right so um looking at the steric number here we got two bonds two bonded atoms plus the two lone pairs so that gives us a steric number a total steric number of four so a steric number of four with two lone pairs is going to give us a bent structure right that 100 less than 109 degree angle uh bent angle for this guy so this guy's going to be bent right so if we take each of these and kind of draw out their their three-dimensional representations just kind of on our own right the environment around carbon a is expected to be tetrahedral right so we have something that's going to look like this right and then it's attached to carbon b and then for carbon b its three-dimensional geometry is trigonal planar right so you'll have carbon b right double bonded to that oxygen single bonded to this oxygen and then bonded there right and then for the oxygen you're going to have a bent structure right so you'll have the oxygen bonded to cb and the hydrogen and put the lone pairs in there right so basically what we want to do to get the full three-dimensional structure of acetic acid is kind of put all of these together right so if we do that right so let's let's kind of put all of this together so we would have let me erase these singular structures here right so we would have if we put all of that stuff together right we would have the tetrahedral geometry around carbon a right dash wedge there hydrogen carbon b and then we would have the tetrahedral the trigonal planar geometry around carbon b right so i'll switch over to this color and then that oxygen right and then around that oxygen we have a bent structure so switching to that final color for this hydrogen right so for if we put all of this together we get something that looks like this right tetrahedral geometry around carbon a trigonal planar around carbon b and then bent around the oxygen atom and so i've, I've calculated a three-dimensional structure here and i'll show you the figure so this is the three-dimensional representation of acetic acid and you can see that it it um gels perfectly with what we just got from vesper theory so right here we see the tetrahedral geometry right this guy is trigonal planar and then around the water molecule we got the bench structure right so even if there is no single defined central atom vesper theory is still useful for figuring out three-dimensional structures for molecules all you have to do is identify the different atomic centers where there's going to be some sort of significant shift in structure due to the electron repulsion and then you just chunk it up into a couple different vesper theory problems and then put it all back together and then you can still use vesper theory to predict these more complicated molecules the 3d structure of these more complicated molecules um, even though the theory itself is built on the idea of a single central atomic atom you just have to chunk up the problem and put it back together but vesper theory can still be useful for a situation where you don't have a clear distinct central atom